Hi, I'm Brady Forrest, back with this week's episode of The Ignite Show. Pretty soon we'll all be sequencing our own DNA to figure out if we have any hidden superpowers. But before you go loading up on test tubes, you'll need some starter tips, and that's where this talk comes in. Dr. Jason Faulkner schools us on the latest and greatest in DNA science. It works. Enjoy. Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They've ranged from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Uh, I thought I would nerd it up a notch with my first slide. Um, <laughs> the, I didn't draw this. This is a web comic. Uh, the theme is that there's all sorts of stuff we live with uh, that science later explains. And that includes DNA, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, my name is Jason. I do this sort of stuff for work, so that's why I thought it'd be a good talk. Um, the first half of the slides are going to explain a little bit about what we know about DNA, and the last half is going to explain uh, some contemporary uses. So DNA is really small. We know it's the source code of life. Oh, thanks. It's in all your cells of your body. Um, you pass it on to your kids when you choose to have kids. I'll just let this slide go. It's really small. You can look at it if you have a 100x microscope or something similar. I've done this before. Uh, there's not much there. Uh, even if you write it out in a text file and you want to analyze it, it's a bunch of A's, T's, C's, and G's. Not that interesting. We know about 95% of DNA is uh, so-called junk. The other 5% is what's actually studied. That 5% is called genes. Genes are interesting because genes code for proteins, and proteins make up you. Uh, mutations in genes are thought to be the cause of human evolution. The X-Men are a great example. Each person has a genetic mutation that gives him a superpower. Laser vision, fast healing, things of that sort. Uh, these sorts of mutations exist in real life, just they're not as cool. Sickle cell anemia is a perfect example. You get resistance to malaria. Uh, however, there's a bunch of problems that come with it, such as early death and a host of health issues throughout your life. But if you look where in the world people have the sickle cell trait, this mutation, it overlaps almost perfectly with where malaria exists. So humans evolved to beat malaria. That's the point, genetic evolution. If you look at the mutation itself, it's down here, it's exactly one change in your DNA, an A turned into a T. In general, this sort of mutation is called a SNP, S-N-P, and that's the sort of thing you study. Uh, there's known to be at least a million functionally different SNPs in the human genome, uh, things such as baldness, resistance to HIV, things of that sort. If you want to know your SNPs, you can do it today. You pay $400, you spit in a tube, mail it off to some company, they'll send you back a list of your SNPs. You can then Google your mutations and see what sort of things you have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. You think that's funny? Doing it on lots of people is hot science right now. Say you have 100 bald people, 100 not. You snip analyze all of them and compare the results, you suddenly know the baldness genes. You can do this for any sort of different trait. It doesn't cost that much money, and you can actually do it on traits of newborns. And so this is a good example where parents screen their kids for preventable genetic disorders. Things primarily such as mental retardation, where if it's found ahead of time, it can be prevented and treated so the kid has a normal life. It affects a lot of kids. What well, would affect a lot of kids? In other countries, parents screen differently. So in China and South Korea, for every 100 little girls parents have, there's currently 113 little boys. All right, that's not the natural ratio, and it causes an obvious problem if you do the math for future generations. <laughs> in the US, we screen differently. Parents prefer. Beautiful or famous DNA. If you have this, your kids are probably worth a lot of money. Uh, that or they'll have an easier time in life. If you prefer a different sort of kids, uh, purebreds are a great example of where DNA manipulation has been done by humans for a long time. We're talking centuries. Uh, you prefer certain traits in animals, so you breed them that way, and most people think it's fun. It's a hobby, worth more money. If you've ever thought plants all look the same, or excuse me, fruit and vegetables look the same at the grocery store, it's usually because they are. They share the same DNA. In plants, it's easier to hijack DNA with grafting. You can chop off part you want to keep, stick it on the root of a new plant, and it'll grow up and produce the same sort of fruit and traits you like. Grafting's kind of brutal if you apply it to people, right? But that is, unless you or a loved one needs an organ transplant. 
In that case, it's not so brutal. We've been doing it for a long time, and most of us think it's a pretty good idea. Go blue. So I have one more example uh, to finish up the presentation, and this is probably one of the most famous DNA examples out there. You'll see this on the TV uh, all the time. It's about criminal investigations. In 1994, DNA started to be used in criminal investigations. There's a big database for this sort of thing. There's 13 mutations that are looked for. If you have these same mutations uh, as the DNA on the crime scene has, you're most certainly the criminal that did the crime. So it's kind of interesting we have this, but it brings me back to my first point. Uh, we know all sorts of stuff about DNA, but there's not much you can do about it other than live with it. Right? Again, my name is Jason, and there's my email if you're interested in uh, talking more about DNA.